Skate fans, this is former LAT Bird skater Sam the Man Washington. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified each time a new video game is uploaded. Thanks for your support. Hi, I'm Elmer Anderson here, along with Dick Holloway, going to bring you another exciting game with the world famous world champion Los Angeles Thunderbirds. We're about to start the second half of tonight's game, and if this second half is as exciting, as the first half of tonight's game, you fans are in for a real treat. Our score at halftime tonight is all tied up at 43 points apiece. Well, Elmer, the big news tonight is the Thunderbirds defeated the New York Bombers in the big halftime, the big Super Battle Royal. It was something else. The T-Birds now get to keep their colors and get to keep their uniforms. And I tell you, there were skaters all over that track. It was unbelievable, just unbelievable. And you guessed it, there was one lone sole survivor, none other than Ronnie Psycho Reigns. It was spectacular, Elmer. Something else. Well, I tell you what, it was a great T-Bird victory. And all the eyes are pointing to next Saturday night's game here at the Olympic Auditorium when Big John Johnson gets his chance to take on Texas coach John Parker. That's right. And I'll tell you what here is happening that Big John Johnson is a little bit worried. Is he out of shape or not? Because Big John Parker has been continuously skating. But Big John Johnson has an observation. He says, and he's heard, that Bob Martin says he will quit if Big John Johnson should win the game. Well, we're going to find out. Is Big John Johnson in shape? Will John Parker take him off? Well, you stay with us because we're going to take this time right now for a brief timeout, and we'll be right back with the start of this, the second half. This is former T-Bird skater Honey Sanchez. The Roller Games broadcast is brought to you by the new book, Rolling Thunder, The Rise and Fall of the L.A. T-Birds. Enjoy the skating action. All right, here we go. Just the start of the second half here. It's going to be some kind of interesting game here tonight. And the New York Bombers immediately sent on number 42. That's Gail Bowers, Chunky Gail Bowers, and Skinny Minnie Miller. Skinny Minnie Miller on the inside, and she takes time. Oh ho Down goes Bowers. Skinny Minnie Miller, one of the best. Number six. See what she can do as she comes up to the back of that pack. Miller, Win Miller, up in front of her. Vicky Steppy, she's gonna get some help from Donnie Young to the back of that pack. She's got 23 seconds remaining in this jam time, and here she comes, one to the outside, one to the outside, she trips him down, and she scores. She continues to move on. Skinny Mini Miller picks up two. Well, you know, talking about a real seller skating star as far as the skinny mini Gwen Miller is concerned. The skinny mini, of course, she's only exactly 100 pounds, built like a glove golf club. And she's a very talented young lady, other than being a natural athlete, was quite a uh, distance runner in uh, Pacoima High School, where she resides. Born and raised there, she's also a concert violinist. She could be one if she wants to pursue that career. She was the lead violinist for the all-girl, all-city orchestra representing Los Angeles. And of course, uh, Dick, uh, I don't know what else to say about such a skating star. Skinny Minnie Miller, she's a live wire, that's for sure. And this team is full of live wires. Number four coming out. 45 for the Thunderbirds and 43 for New York. Number four is Donna Young. She hails from Compton. Compton High School, the Tarbeam. On the inside, once again, number 45, Dusty Ford. She rails her. Over the top. The gal goes. She's continually moving on forward. She's a forwardly skater, as they say. She skates forward all the time. Hates to take a backward step. Trying to move through the inside. Juanita Ricardo. Ricardo for the Thunderbirds, the back of that pack. Oh, she slips to the inside. A good move. Dusty Ford back to the inside, trying to duck through if she can get through. Having trouble. The Thunderbirds still three abreast across the front of her here. Vicky Steppy breaking up the pack now. And how many pick up? They say three points for Dusty.
Dusty Ford, and they go out in front 46 to 45, Elmer. You know, the International Roller League Commission has given its approval for this year's All-Star Game. I really, hey, look at here. We almost got something going here. I'm gonna tell you fans about this in just a second. Anyway, I should really say games, because there will be two of them. The first one on Saturday, March the 4th at the San Bernardino Orange Showgrounds Swing Auditorium. The second game right here at the Olympic Auditorium on Saturday night, March the 11th. It will be the world champion T-Birds against an all-star team picked from the top skating talent from the rest of the league. Now you as a fan, you can certainly cast your own votes for the skaters you'd like to see on the all-star team by sending your ballot to the T-Birds. Box 3330, Hollywood 90028. Or calling the T-Bird headquarters at the Olympic Auditorium right here or call Richmond 95171. Remember, that's March the 4th at San Bernardino. All right, it's a lively second period here in this. Oh, they continue to go. That's Debbie Hilton, Hilton, a fist skating period out in front. They're yelling, go, go, go. Jim McInerney on the house, Mikey, ready to get these people enthused. And it doesn't take much for this big game here tonight. The Thunderbirds and New York Bombers, 46 for New York, 45 for the T-Birds. Deborah Hilton banged down hard again, trying to get by the double block. A Bowers and Dusty Ford, the back of the pack. Hitting the straightaway. Oh, look out! Skinny Minnie Miller! Flies through, breaks down a double block. They pick up two. They take the lead, 47 to 46. Yes, uh, Vicky Steppe here and Skinny Minnie Miller are having quite a to-do here because it looks like there's that personal hatred is coming out again. Vicky Steppe walking back, talking to her teammate, sort of saying, hey, let's get this gal, let's solve her down. Okay, here we go, 47 to 46. Good, good game here tonight, the fist skating period. You see it right there on your screen. The Thunderbirds with a slim, slim lead, just the narrowest lead, the one point lead. All decked out in those colors. Gold and green, the Thunderbirds. The world champion, world famous Thunderbirds. And who are they gonna try to get out of that pack? They have to have that jamming of it on. She's in the back of the pack, that's Juanita Ricardo. It's a good one, a solid built gal. She's an artiste, plays the guitar also. A good one. Here she goes, trying to get on the pack. Here she goes, Juanita Ricardo, wearing jersey number seven. An excellent, excellent competitor. A rough, rough competitor. She hits a straightaway. John Hall, you see him on camera. The back of the pack, Vicky Steppe, trying to stop her. She's wearing jersey number 41. The color's the blue and the gold, the New York Bombers. 441 remaining. 60 second jam time and coming up in a hurry in the back of the pack. Number 46 trying to get through Dusty Ford. She's now the leading jammer. Vicky Steffi doing a fine job for her team. The last to throw it down to the penalty box. But in the meantime, Juanita Ricardo stalled on the wayside. Dusty Ford trying to pick up points for her team, the Bombers. Thunderbirds still have that slim lead, but it's going to be changed here in a moment. A long one minute jam here. The referee, Tom Rafferty. And Don Lastra signify how many points. Elmer, we're still waiting for the scoring. They say two. Two points. That's 48 for New York and 47 for the Thunderbirds with 4.02 remaining on the clock. You know, I'm betting that the furrow really flies this coming Saturday night here at the Olympic Auditorium. I think John Johnson's finally got this match race with Texas coach John Parker. Parker's been avoiding this match race for over six months, you know, thanks to a little help from his friend Bob Martin. But thanks to T-Bird pressure, Big John finally gets his chance. Two giant men squaring off against each other with no holes barred. I certainly wish Big John good luck, but you know, I'm just a little bit worried. He may be out of shape since he's retired, been out seven months. I think he'll need all the support he can possibly get this coming Saturday night here at the Olympic Auditorium. Okay, action with 321 remaining in this period. Deborah Heldon, Heldon Lady Jammer. She is exciting. She continually moves out. 42. Gail Chunky Bowers. Hey, my screen, a chunky little can of tuna. Number four, Donnie Young. Oh, she popped her a good one. And Donnie Young, when this gal gets that high step, dropped her down, and Donnie Young will continue to fight this gal tooth and nail. Once again, she pops her. She liked to throw that vicious left hand of hers. Watch out. And here comes Stephanie again. Oh, she takes care of Stephanie. She knocks her down. She's got all kinds of them down. She raised her hands and Oh, Stephanie trying to get at her now. They say no 
score. We have a Donnybrook down there, Elmer, with 2.35 remaining. No score, 48 to 47. You are down in front of Donny. I'm a happy gal. You know, everybody, uh, every year the T-Birds like to take a special night to say thank you to all their loyal fans, you know. This year, the annual fan appreciation night will be held at the Olympic Auditorium on Tuesday night, the 7th of next month, when the T-Birds clash with the El Fabuloso and his Hawks in the first game of their series against the L.A. T-Birds. Now, this game should be exciting enough, but to show their appreciation, the T-Birds will have free T-Bird souvenirs for all their fans, as well as a special autograph and photograph session. So, why don't you guys bring your camera down and, oh yeah, there'll be a special reduced prices for this special game. 144 remaining on the clock. This sophisticating period, and once again, Juanita Ricardo. Good, good, tough, rough competitor. Great on the offense and fabulous on the defense. And now she's got a half a lap to go to get around that pack. Approaching the back of the pack, she has to get by Chunky Gale Bowers. Bowers, a good one. A triple block to the backside. She picks out, but she goes down to her knees. Up again. And she wants help, Juanita Ricardo. She's going to get help from Skinny Mitty Miller. Miller, the thin one. And the husky gal. Juanita Ricardo, she gets a whip. Wow, right there, too. Three, two more. Yes, she breaks through. Juanita Ricardo, who was born in Barcelona, Spain, 24 years ago. Naturally, speaks Spanish fluently. Currently is trying to be an artist, going for her commercial degree in freelance uh, artistry. And of course, she working her way through college uh, by becoming and being a professional skater. Speaks with quite a distinctive accent, of course, English fluently. But everybody uh, always presses her for her knowledge of Spain and the uh, European country. She's been skating in the on the bank track. This will be her fifth professional year and quite an asset to the Thunderbird team. Every team would love to have her. Well, we, we've got a timeout here, so stay with us because we're going to come right back. Well, hi, everybody. This is Dick Hallway, the Los Angeles Thunderbirds broadcaster. Say hello. This vintage roller derby games broadcast is brought to you by the new book, Rolling Thunder, the golden age of roller derby. Enjoy the classic bank track action. Oh, me, oh, hi. The men are on the track for the sixth skating period, and it will be some kind of good period. We've got a fine team here tonight. Ronnie Psycho Reigns, Danny Rowley, Frankie Macedo, and the leading jammer right presently is Carlos Marquez, but he's being roughed up in a hurry by number 46, Big Cecil Harris. Big Cease. 9.41 remaining. Plenty of time here in the sixth skating period. Cecil Harris, a big man on that track. He's got lots of moves. He's got lots of strength. He's going to hit the straightaway. And Elmer looks loose in the back of the pack. Got out of the big Danny Riley. And Riley, bow, he blocks him one time. Here comes Marquez in a hurry. He needs a jamming oven. As Cecil Harris trying to get through for the Bombers. And Riley's got him by the hand. And what's Riley going to win with him? He blocks him. And here comes. That's right, Carlos Marquez. A fine line. Skinny duck to the one. I don't know if he got that helmet on in time to get a word of that point or not. The referee said, Castro said, the jam is still continuing. Cecil Harris still the be jammer. And they say, no score, I believe, Elmer. He did not have a helmet on. With 8 54 remaining on the clock. Score means 53 for the Thunderbirds and 48 for New York. Regardless of the fact that he scored or not on the uh, play, the play would have automatically been called off because he was the leading jam skater and he went off the skating surface of the track. If our fans are watching around the T-Bird Network, when a skater, the leading jammer, leaves the skating surface, it automatically calls the play off. However, he also got knocked down, and that too stopped the play. <laughs> oh, he lost his helmet. He went off the track. And Ronnie Ray What's he doing over there? Ronnie Reigns has got a jamming oven and he's got a blue and gold jacket. And, oh, Elmer, you can explain. 
explain this blue and gold jacket in just a minute here, because this guy, he's so exciting. He's up, here he goes! Friday Cyclo Raids, a big bobber, and says, oh, look at that jacket. That's right, he was the sole survivor of that big one. And the Thunderbirds get to keep it with 755 remaining in the clock. Ronnie Cyclo Raids of any jammer. He's got that bright gold helmet on. And this jacket, Elmer, as I said, you can explain in a second. And let's see what the crazy man does. The cycle, a little under the weather tonight. And in the meantime, Greg Robertson, he goes right up by him. Up to Gregory Grant, he spins on by him. He gets a whip from Danny Riley. Continue. He goes by the entire team. He's going to get a grand slam. The cycle. Ronnie Psycho Reigns has picked up five big ones. And Elmer, explain that jacket. Well, I'll tell you something. If our fans here will go back in uh, time a little bit, many years ago, Ronnie Reigns was a member of the Bomber team. And the fans gave him that beautiful, and I mean it is beautiful, a sequence studded gold and brown and blue jacket. Symbolic, of course, of the bomber color. Now he's rubbing salt right into the bomber team. The members and Greg Robertson blowing his cork here. Ronnie Reigns, as I told you, he can pull him right out of the old hat. He's an enigma. He is funny, he is sad, he's a clown, and he is dangerous. Robertson doesn't like it. This is what you call really hurting a guy. Ray's digging out that jacket. Took a lot of time to think of this one. And boy, the results are going to be very noticeable. Hey, he's team track, I don't think. You know, Ronnie says, hey, you want my jacket back just as well? I'll leave it to Ronnie to come up and we'll enjoy watching him whenever the roller games appears in your city. Come on down. He's crazy. They call him El Poco Loco, Ronnie Psycho Reigns. And number four, coming out of the pack in a hurry, the colors, the green and the gold. They are the Thunderbird colors. Frankie Macedo. Macedo. Alongside number 47, Gregory Quinn. And he just moves on. Number 47, Gregory Quinn, the leading cameras. Macedo got bumped out of there. Frankie Macedo would like to pick up some points tonight for the Children's Hospital at Canoga Park, but right now he's going to sit on the bench. He may end up in an emergency ward if he doesn't watch out. Number 27, Gregory Quinn. The leading jammer for New York Bomber team with 5.43 remaining on the clock. He's picking up points in a hurry. And they would like to score on Frankie Macedo. Macedo trying to score away. They set on the rail and over to the top. And they score. And we got a dotty book on the far side between Cecil Harris and Ronnie Psycho Ray. In the meantime, the referee has not signified how many points they picked up. They say four. Four points. Now it's 52 for New York and 58 for the Thunderbirds with 524, Elmer. Well, I think we got a timeout here, so we're going to take this time and come right back after this commercial. Ronnie Psycho Range, you see him sitting in the penalty box. He creeps out of there. And John Hall, he's smiling and laughing at him. The Psycho. He's the one that saved it for the Thunderbirds. He saved it all, but I tell you, the man sitting next to me, he'll tell you pretty soon what's going on. Number 58, that's 58 points for the Thunderbirds and 52 for the New York Bombers. Just a fist skating period with 5.05 remaining. And who's going to get out of the jam? The Thunderbirds would like to get a speedy man out to go against this little man. Georgie Fernandez, he's the Cuban flyer. Georgie Fernandez, and he is a good one. Fernandez, number 43. Got a full beard out there. The little man, but he can move. He's an excellent competitor. Very smooth on the skates. I don't know where he got those socks from. In the back of the pack, Danny Riley. Riley throws a forearm across the chest of Fernandez. Oh, he pops him again. 4.43 remaining on the clock. The clock continues to move. Thunderbird still with a small lead. And Marquez goes over the rail and over the top. In the meantime, the little man just scoops on picks up three points. That's 55 now for New York and 58 for the Thunderbirds with 4.13 remaining, Elmer. I don't know why I keep saying all-star game when I really meant games Marquez. because there will be two of them. The first one on Saturday, March the 4th at San Bernardino's Orange Showgrounds at the Swing Auditorium. And the second one is right here at the Olympic Auditorium on Saturday night, March the 11th. It'll be the world champion T-Birds against an all-star team pick from the greatest of the skating talent from all of the league. Now, you as a fan can get your votes by for the skaters that you'd like to see on the All-Star team, sending your ballots to the T-Bird box 
3330 Hollywood 90028. Or once you call T Bird Headquarters in the Olympic Auditorium, Richmond 95171. Number 47, Gregory Quinn moves out. The colors the blue and the gold of the New York Bombers. The Thunderbirds have number two, Sam the Man Washington. Yellow and gold. That's their new colors. Are they uh, get to wear them now? That's right. Yellow and excuse me, gold and green. Oh, I keep thinking about that yellow chicken we saw around here. It's gold, gold and green. That's their colors. Number 47, Gregory Quinn. Approaches the back of the pack. He's got the straightaway. Let's see what he can do for the bomber team. He's a good one. Excellent athlete. Sam Washington. Always, always energetic. He pops him. He jumps high and knocks him down. And Gregory Quinn's wondering, what am I going to do now? And he just throws a beautiful little move by Cecil Harris. But now the bombers have two. And he moved him out that time with an excellent skating move. But Sam Washington skates to the back of the pack again. But they had the leading jammer. And the referee says no score, no helmet, no ticky, no washi. Right, I'll tell you what, we got some fine people in attendance here. The James Comac Productions, who currently produce such network show as Welcome Back Cotter, Chico and the Man, and many, many others. They're producing a new series for NBC called Roller Girls. And the entire production crew is in attendance here at the Olympic Auditorium. Here they are, fine looking bunch of talented people. Well, looks like a lot of fun. The T-Birds are certainly looking forward to it. NBC going to pick up a show called Roller Gay Girls. 156 remaining here in the sixth skating period. 58 to 55 in favor of the Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds have it at their own way so far, but the scoring has been very minimal. Very low scoring contest here. Carlos Marquez, as you can see, is trying to work his way through the pack. The gold and green, the colors of the Thunderbirds. And he goes down hard. A beautiful middle in the pack go by Macedo, and he's pressing him up. Frankie Macedo is breaking up that pack. The beautiful defensive work in there, or should I say offensive, as their skater continues to move forward. The cycle gives a whip to Carlos Marquez. He's trying to get by John Rodriguez, number 48, a large size to the middle. And they award him one point. That's 59 to 55. The Thunderbirds over New York with 105 remaining. You know, many of the fans wonder, how, how do the skaters actually react when they hit something as hard as this cast iron infield? And it's due to constant, constant training. Going over the track, over the rail, and falling to that distance means you must immediately mentally relax. You have to be as in shape physically as you are mentally, and vice versa. Carlos Marquez going over there, he's not hurt. He got up and he rolled with the punches. Good, good job. Well, there's only 38 seconds remaining in the skating period. This is the sixth skating period. And the cycle, on the cycle range, he is something else. Is he gonna get the jammy helmet? Oh yeah, he's got it. Right in the middle of the pack. Three times national speed skating champion. Michael Reigns, he can move in here, he now. Fernandez down. Greg Robertson with the rails. And down inside again. Ronnie Seiko Reigns wearing jersey number five. And look at him go. The cycle with three, two, one. And how many did he pick up? Five, he got a grand slam. Well, the Grand Slam in our terminology means you get five points passing the entire field. Looks like we have a timeout here call between the periods. So with this timeout, we're going to come right back. So stay with us. We'll be right back. The score 64-55 in favor of the T-Birds. Hi, this is Gina Valadares. My father, Ralphie, spent most of his career with the Thunderbirds. This Roller Games broadcast is brought to you by the new book, Rolling Thunder, The Golden Age of Roller Derby and the Rise and Fall of the Alley T-Birds. Enjoy the skating action. Well, on that last jam there, the referee Tom Rafferty took away a few points from the Thunderbirds, so I'm not exactly sure what that score is. We'll be getting it for you in just a second here. I believe they took away three points for the Thunderbirds. Gals move out. Number one, Deborah Heldon and Vicky Steppy. Steppy for the New York Bombers and Deborah Heldon for the Thunderbirds. That's the world famous world champion Thunderbirds. Located right here in the Olympic Auditorium. 
Vicky Steppy, she's got her helmet in her hand. She better put it on her little beanie there. All right. Vicky Steppy trying to get by Juanita Ricardo, number seven, number six, Skinny Minnie Miller. Vicky Steppy, they call her old spaghetti legs. Trying to make an approach with 918 remaining. Plenty of time in this seventh skinny period. And oh, she busts right on through. A good move by the skinny one. Continues. She goes by Sue Lapa. She goes by Patsy Delgado. And she calls it off, and they pick up four more points. Now we'll get the score corrected for you in just a minute. Well, I tell you, there's going to be more than fur. There's going to be wool, wheels, and uh, lumber flying around here this coming Saturday night at the Olympic Auditorium. Big John Johnson. Oh, everybody's so happy. Finally got this match raised with Texas coach, the big guy, John Parker. Parker, you know, he's been staying away this, from this match race for over six months. But thanks to a lot of politics, a uh, little help from his friend uh, Bob Martin. Well, that's why he's been staying out of it. But thanks to a lot of T-Bird pressure, Big John is finally getting his chance. Two giant men are going to be squaring off against each other with no holes barred. 64 to 59, the Thunderbird got it, but with 814 remaining. Plenty of time here. For either team, the Thunderbirds to increase their lead or New York to catch up. And number 42, Chunky Gail Bauer. She's out all alone by herself here. A late chase by Juanita Ricardo. Ricardo still way back in the pack. And Donna Young trying to do a good job on defense in the back of that pack. Donna Young points up to Vicky Steffi. And anytime Gail Bowers gets a good move on Juanita Ricardo. Ricardo puts her again and Steffi. Good move by her, and she sidestepped one of the Thunderbird skaters. She calls off the jam in there, and they pick up some more points. Now, wait a minute, they say one point for each team, Elmer. 65 to 60 the score now. The Thunderbirds out in front with 7.25 remaining. For anybody watching the exciting game called Roller Games along our T-Bird network, you've been wondering how the action is played. Well, with very simple, very, very simple. One of the greatest and simplest sporting events in the world today, the skater. And there's five from each team on the track. One of the five wears a helmet. And that skater is designated and called in terminology as the jammer, the offensive skater. They have, when they leave the pack, which is all the skaters together, they have 60 seconds to circle the track and pass members of the opposite team for which they would pick up one point for their team. Let's watch Skinny Minnie Miller with the helmet. She's the jammer, now she has 60 seconds circle that track and try to pass as many bombers as she can. Skinny Minnie Miller, number six. What a skater. Excellent, excellent competitor. I call her Miss Fantastic. Skinny Minnie Miller. And see what this gal can do as she's got to get by Vicky Steppy. Old Spaghetti Lake's the back of the pack. She's the captain of the gals team and she's a good, oh, out of move. Skinny Minnie, out of move. She ducked under, she reverses, but to get back again. Makes a pull out of Vicky Steppy. Goes by the Chucky one. She's got the straightaway. Reverses. Continues forwardly. Skinny Minnie Miller trying to pick him up and lay him down. How much time she have? She's got five, four, three, two, one. And she gets by Steppy once again for four big Thunderbird points. 69 to 60. The Thunderbirds with 553 remaining the seventh skating period. I don't think I have to mention to the fans that are watching this exciting game tonight. I tell you what, we're going to go right downstairs to our trackside reporter, Jim McInerney. Big Johnny Johnson is here with me. It's been seven long months of retirement. Are you in shape? The big match race next Saturday night. No, I'm not going tonight. I'm not in shape. As you know, like you say, I've been away for a while. But look here. The statement that Mr. Parker made about me, look, I'm really uptight about it. You know what I mean? And when I get to Parker out here, I'm going to take care of him. And when I get through with Parker, then I'm going to be looking for this Bob Martin. Well, you heard it. He's coming after Bob Martin. So right back up to Elmer Anderson and the rest of this game. Okay, 5.41 remaining. Good interview. Big John Johnson. He said he'll be ready. And number four, she's ready. That's Donna Young from Compton. The Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. oh, that's their colors, thanks to a great, great soul survivor race. That's right. Okay, Donna Young, and coming up behind her to her, number 44. This new gal, Teresa Drinker. Drinker. Yeah, let's see if she's a skater, not a drinker. She's a drinker making her move. That's right. 
So far doing a good job. Can she get by Juanita Ricardo, the good veteran? Well, Steffi helps her out there. She grabs her and drinks her. She's getting around a little slow, but she's going to make it. It looks like for her team is she's getting great offensive help. Great help by her entire team in there. It's up to Deborah Hilton to try her hold of the pack. She goes to the infield. John Hall really disgusted, but they pick up two points. 62 for New York, 69 for the Thunderbirds at 441. And Elmer, what's happening? Well, I tell you what, a lot of things are happening. We can't answer all the mail around the country, but please, if you're interested in buying a picture of the T-Birds or some tickets or whatever information you folks want, wherever you may be watching the game today, please call the Olympic Auditorium, Richmond 95171, any time during the day, and you'll get that information. Or, as we said before, right, right here to the Olympic Auditorium, 18th and Grand Avenue, downtown L.A., and you'll get the information you're looking for. Hey, you're speaking about letters, so we got one from Booby Livingston, they call it. Booby Livingston and Jim Riley from Toluca Lake. They like the T-Birds. All right. What's the score? 69 Thunderbirds, 62 New York. 3.55 remaining in the seventh skating period. The final 3.50 for the gals in the period of the middle. Finish it up. It's been a good game. New York Bombers not too happy tonight. And this gal shoots up by, oh, she gets double time by Vicky Steppi. Down hard, down hard. In the meantime, we're 42. Chunky Gail Bowers makes a good move to the high part of the track. And she scores. She calls it off. Don Laftis is 4 and 66 now for New York. 69 for the Thunderbirds with 3.20 remaining. This game, of course, is being watched by millions of people. And, of course, everybody's probably noticed that there is no single skating star. This is a game known for teamwork. You must help your uh, teammate get in there and score. Very few points are scored by yourself. That's one of the reasons that this is called the open game, the most exciting sporting event for everybody. The little folks like it. We got the Pee Wees who start out their training programs. Very, very young. Come on down and see them skate in the bank track sometime. Or we have the older folks and the older, older folks. Everybody likes the family sport, the roller game. Now look at these people out there, all happy people, and they're intent. The face is right, quite intent now as the Thunderbirds only have a slim three-point lead. And there's one gal that can do it for him. That's skinny Minnie Miller. She wears jersey number six. The fans know her well. They love her. Quite a competitor. As Elmer told you earlier, she plays the violin, you name it. But she can also skate. One of the best, if not the best. Skinny Minnie Miller. And I love to see her with a flying drop kick. And right now, she lands on her backside, and she does not like that. She does not like that. Believe me, there's not a whole lot of meat on that gal. Hits hard on this bank track. Now Juanita Ricardo, she liked the stopper. For jersey number seven, the green and the gold, the colors of the Thunderbirds. Nikki Steffi grabbing the helmet. She wants to get the She goes over the top. Nikki Steffi number 41 for the Bombers to the 148 remaining. Has to get by Donna Young. She kicks her to the back. Oh, kicks her. The small of the back. And yeah, they throw her in the penalty box. T-Birds can do it. Well, there's Vicki Steppi, long and tall. She's probably the tallest gal in the uh, roller league today. She goes almost 5'11 and a half. Formerly born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, has been a veteran as far as veterans on the bank track are concerned. 11 years from the time she first came out of the training program back on the East Coast, having a few words with John Hall here. Very voracious young lady. She has no fear of anybody. She'll tell anybody off, and she is a dynamic leader. A very incisive type of person. Look at Roddy Range talking about an incisive type of person. He'll get to you. He'll drive you absolutely up the wall. Yeah. I tell you, he's a really nice guy. He's something else, but you can talk to that man, and you don't even know what he's saying. All right, 66 to 69. The Thunderbirds with a three-point lead. Only 42 seconds to make the They want to leave this period ahead. Let me tell you. And she says, I want a jammy helmet. That's Donnie Young. She wants a jammy helmet. When she points her head, you know what she means. And now she's got one. Number four, Donnie Young. For the Thunderbirds, a world famous, world champion Thunderbird. She has to get by Dusty Ford. Ford back of the back, she just beautiful move. She didn't even hardly see her. She went on by her. But this gal is another story. Gail Bauer, she gets by her. 14 seconds to ready. And can she get more? With the back of her by Juanita Ricardo. Eight seconds to ready. She continues to pick up more points. Can she get by Drinker? She goes to the field with a good move by Drinker, but she picks up three.
three points. That period is over. And it looks like a very happy bunch of T-Birds here as they leave 72 to 66. And we're gonna come right back with the fourth skating period of this year right after we have these few words from our studio. Hi, I'm John Walls, former T-Bird General Manager. This roller game skating action is brought to you by the publisher for Rolling Thunder, the golden age of roller derby and the rise and fall of the other T-Birds. You can order this spectacular, exciting book on Amazon. Enjoy this final period of roller skating action. Well, the Thunderbirds still have a six-point lead, but is it going to hold up? This New York Bomber team is tough. And in the end, in the clutch, that's what it counts. The final score. That's all she reads. And right now, they're going to six-point lead. This man out in front, number 44, Vic Redman. He said he could do it. He boosts. He, ha! Oh, Vic Redmond, the wild one, tall and lean, number 44, the colors of blue and the gold is Greg Robertson, Gregory Quinn, a fine team the Bombers have, and Danny Riley, the carrot top for the Thunderbird, pops him on time, and Riley pops him again, and Riley pops Cecil Harris, he pops him again, Harris, and Redmond, here comes Sam Washington, Washington, they take, Washington picks up one, can he get more? fly here at the uh, this coming Saturday night at the Olympic Auditorium with Big John Johnson. You know, he finally got his match race with Texas Coach Parker. Well, Parker's been avoiding this match race for over six months. Thanks to a little help from his friend Bob Martin, that's what he did it. But thanks to T-Bird political pressure, Big John finally gets his chance. And it's going to be what we would say, two giant men squaring off against each other at no holds barred. Now, personally, I wish Big John good luck, but I'm just a little worried, you know. He may be out of shape being off seven months, and I think he's going to need all the support you fans can possibly give him this coming Saturday night here at the Olympic Auditorium. Uh, it should be a good one, Elmer, that's for sure. The Thunderbirds with a 10-point lead. When in time remaining here, the Thunderbirds have to be careful. And here comes Ralph B. Valadares. pleasure to see some of the exciting uh, talented television people here tonight watching the game. In fact, the James Pumac Production Group are currently producing, and I can think of them right away, network shows like Bunker Back Connor, Chico and a Man, and many, many others. They're producing a new series for NBC, and it's called Roller Girls. And the entire production crew is here at the Olympic Auditorium in attendance, and the T-Birds are really looking forward, feeling it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, you folks didn't get a chance to see it. The psycho down there. He put the jacket on the referee. Now he's he's telling the psycho to move out of here. The bald one. Now, and look at the psycho. He's just prancing away with that jacket on. The big copper jacket. The big blue in the sky. <laughs> oh, me, oh, my. Some kind of game. In the meantime, the Thunderbirds still got a lead. They're out in front 77 to 66. With 6.25 remaining on the clock. The referee slaps a fine on John Hall. John Hall talking back to him. The Thunderbirds trying to pick up a win here tonight. The Bombers want to score. It's been some kind of game. Plenty of action. Plenty of people here tonight. Enjoy this rough house action. Action for and Sam the Man is showing plenty of excitement tonight. Mr. Excitement. And he's moving out now on the chair. Start of that jam, he goes by number 44, Vic Redmond. Redmond approaches him once again on the inside. Tries to knock him down, hits him to the left side of the leg, and he stops. Oh, Sam goes right in the red. It didn't 
hurt that leg on that one. And Frankie Macedo, the veteran of the bank track, the back of the pack. Macedo, the Thunderbird, and Redmond, the bomber. And he blocks, oh, hard right into the rail. And Macedo holding the upper hand with 5.30 remaining of the clock. The Thunderbird still with 11 point lead. Sam Washington creeping up the back of the pack once again. Washington. Now he's, oh, he goes to the infield. Redmond, oh, a good move, gets by Macedo. Cut by Ralph Valadares. Trying to pick up more points. The man on the front is Carlos Marquez. With Ray Palmer to do it. Some extra lucky with three, two, one, and that's all. And how many points they pick up? Three points. 69 to 76. 77, correction, the Thunderbirds out in front with five minutes remaining over. I tell you what, I'm as thrilled as anybody could possibly be because don't give up with this particular bomber team. They're a powerhouse on paper, they're a powerhouse on the track, and the T-Birds are having a little problem here uh, trying to get them. But we're going to go right downstairs to Jim McInerney, our trackside reporter. Well, I have El Fabuloso. I had hoped to talk to Bob Martin or John Parker, but I have El Fabuloso as a spokesman That's here. That's right, a spokesman for my friend Bob Martin, who has been humiliated by this crowd and by Johnson in particular. I've got news for you people. When Parker comes in here, he's going to destroy Johnson. Johnson knows he's an old, dilapidated old man that is out of shape and tired. He's through here. He was through seven years ago. He's through now. My team is You heard it from Mel Fabuloso. He says you know Johnson through. We'll be, be right back after, after this word. I don't care about coming back after this all right, don't forget this coming Saturday night, Big John Johnson, he's going to get that match race he wants with Chief Parker, and it should be a good one. 77 for the Thunderbirds, 69 for the Bombers, and the Bombers trying to get their leading jammer out there, and he's a good one, that's Gregory Quinn. And here comes Carlos Marquez. Marquez for the Thunderbirds wearing jersey number three. 340 remaining on the clock, but still over 47. He is the leading jammer, that's Gregory Quinn, and he knocks down Carlos Marquez hard. He went down real hard on that jam, and it's up to Riley. Riley, protect this Thunderbird lead. 77 to 69, 325 remaining. The clock continues to run in the favor of the Thunderbird. And Riley doing an excellent, excellent job. He's the man in the trenches here tonight, but here comes Fernandez. Oh, he picked him up! He picked, Riley picked him up! Oh, oh, oh me oh my! Oh, me oh my! And something else here, he says, hit me! He hits him again! We're gonna take a brief timeout, and we're coming right back. All right, there's less than three minutes remaining here. The Thunderbirds are the lead, 77 to 69, and they always say, it's great to watch an event, but it's fantastic to be there. And the things you don't see, Ronnie Cycle Reigns lying on the track, and he is something else, he's crazy. Okay, 238 remaining. Greg Robertson coming out of the pack. Ralphie Valadares getting a leg whip. The Roddy Cycle Rays and the Thunderbirds look strong today. They look strong tonight. Ralphie Valadares down hard. Jumping, rolling, and down to the infield. Valadares, he crosses the track, trying to get up again. But Greg Robertson, the lead jammer, pulls right on through. How many points can he pick up for the Bombers? 210 remaining, and as Elmer said, you can never count this team out. And Ronnie Psycho Reigns trying to leg trip him, but he couldn't get him down. Valadares being held in tight by the bottle. And this man's picking up a bundle of points. The Thunderbirds had an eight-point lead, but he's picking up points. But less than two minutes remaining now. He continues to pick up a bundle of points. A bundle, more than a slam. Maybe two grand slams. I don't know, it's up to what the referee says. He says, a double grand slam. He picked up 10 points, they've got the lead, Edward. 79 to 77, only 138 remaining. You know, talking about the All-Star game, we're gonna have two of them. The first one will be Saturday, March the 4th, at San Bernardino's Orange Show Grounds at the old uh, Swing Auditorium. The second one, right here at the Olympic Auditorium on Saturday night, March the 11th. It'll be the world champion T-Birds against an All-Star team picked from the best of the skating league. Now you as a fan can cast your votes for these skaters by sending your ballots to the T-Bird box, post office box 3330 Hollywood 90028 or call right here to T-Bird headquarters, Olympic Auditorium, it's the 95171. Okay, there's only just a minute left in this game. The Thunderbirds better get going. 
They're down by two points, 79 to 77. I tell you, we'll be going down to wrap up with Elmer Anderson immediately following this game, so stay tuned. It should be very, very interesting. A lot of things been going on, but right now the Thunderbirds, they better make it interesting. They better make something happen. They're down by two points. And Sam the man watches it. Mr. Excitement, the one they can count on. He comes out of the pack. It's Fernandez. Takes a flying, leaping lead up and misses him. Okay, Sam the man with 30 seconds remaining. The countdown. They're down by two. 79 to 77. 25 seconds. We got a runaway now. Sam the man. Oh, he fell flat on his face. That's great. Great quail. D'Amato. He goes by him. He goes by Fernandez. He scored. I think the Thunderbirds are going to win it. 15 seconds. 14 seconds. up eight big points and stand by we'll be right back with Elmer Anderson eight Thunderbird points You know, Big John, I've been an admirer of yours for many, many years. You've been an athlete in your past and your college days. You know, just being in shape is going to be nothing compared to what you're going to have to be in shape with to compete against John Parker next Saturday night. Elmer, I know what you mean. There's a lot of concern about what kind of shape I'm in, if I'm in shape to be Parker. I know Parker has been skating, and he's been skating, you know, throughout the country this year. I haven't. I have been into retirement. But, Elmer... I've been an athletic all my life, basketball, you name it. You know, cross country track, I ran track. I know I'm big and everything, and I'm not quite agile because of my height. But let me tell you, I anything that it takes to, for me to bring on this track to get next to Mr. Parker, that's exactly what I'm going to do next Saturday night. I've got Look, news for you. I, the only thing you run away from, sorry. black boy, is your creditors. People, I want you to know after my friend Bob Martin has been humiliated out here, he is coming back. He is coming back with John Parker, the number one skater out here. This old man thinks he's going to win. There's no chance. There's no chance whatsoever. John Parker has been skating week in and week out out here all across this country. And he is the number one skater out here for a big man. Big man, you've got a big mouth and you're going to lose. You're going to lose, old timer. You're going to lose. I want you to know that. Give me this cross country. I just want to say one thing to this guy. I might be old and I might be out of shape, but I you guarantee are. you one thing. You Whatever it shape. takes to beat Parker, I will beat it. And if it comes to Mark, Martin, Martin better watch out because he will be next in line. Well, I'll tell you what, Big John, you know, Bob Martin said if you win, he will quit. He will retire. Elmer, no matter what it takes, I don't care what it They can call me old man, out of shape, or anything, whatever it takes. Look, I have skated this track before, Elmer, and I can skate at any time. I can beat Parker any time that I feel like I can beat him because I feel that I am in good shape. your creditors. That's the only thing I want you to know right now. That's the only thing you've been running away from. John Parker is going to win this match race, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just keep on talking anyway. Right back up to you, Dick Holloway. Well, there you go. Another exciting game. The final score of the Thunderbirds, 85-79 to for the New York Bombers. And next week promises to be even more exciting when the Thunderbirds invade the Olympic Auditorium to try it for a big win over the world-famous world champion Thunderbirds. Until then, bye-bye, everybody.